Good morning, and today I'm actually at home, which is a bit of a rare thing, but there is a reason for it. You can just make it out behind me. The weather is currently absolutely atrocious. It's down to minus six, and the whole area of Yorkshire where I live is shrouded in this thick band of freezing fog. And I've just done a search on Facebook for the lakes that I normally fish, and they're all frozen, so I'm stuck at home. And it was about this time last year when I did a vlog about some of the gear changes that I was bringing into my fishing in 2022. So I thought I'd do the same for this year by taking a look at some of the new items that I'm going to be using and also telling you why I'm going to be using them and also giving you a bit of an insight into them. So let's start off by taking a look at something which would be perfect if you were stupid enough to be out fishing in these conditions, and that's the heated mattress cover from Avid. Thankfully that awful fog started to disappear, so uh, let's begin by taking a look at this product when it's packed away. And there it is, just resting on top of your bed chair. And it's worth pointing out at this stage that this item only comes in two different sizes, that's the standard and the X size. And the reason for that is because it only works with Avid Carp's benchmark systems. Okay, so if you've not got a benchmark bed chair, then why not? Because they're definitely the best on the market. And if you've not got a system, well, don't worry, because you can also get a heated sleeping bag, which obviously works with any type of bed chair, and not just the Avid ones. But for this particular item, it only fits the systems. And the way that it fits them is you can see down both sides, there are two zips. There's the other side. And these two zips attach themselves to the benchmark system, one to the mattress itself and the other one to the outer bag. So with the magic of technology, let's put this one together and I'll talk to you in a few minutes time. So there you go, that was easy. <laughs> and before any of you tell me that that's a mucky bed chair, I know, that's the joys of having a dog. Little footprints all over the place. But I'll tell you what, thankfully you couldn't smell it because when I opened that bed chair bag, it properly stunk. It needs a good old washing, but um, there you go anyway. There's the mattress in place. There it is on top of the original system mattress. And what I'm gonna do now is just show you how it actually fits in place. Obviously you unroll it and you've got these two little clips here which allows it to be, if I can open it, there you go, allows it to be attached to the top part of the bed chair and then as I said earlier on there's a couple of zips that's actually on the mattress down the side. Basically one fits to the mattress of the bed chair there and then the other one fits, just unzip that, and then the other one fits to the actual system. So there it is, there's the, the heated mattress in place. So I'm just gonna unzip it all so you can see the mattress. Just pull the sleeping bag back so you can have a good look at the mattress itself. And you can see just down here, that's where the two zips are. And we've just got this little cover that just Velcro's into place to protect that because we all know few drafts can get through zips but there's the actual mattress itself so how does the mattress get warm well basically you've got three elements in it one down this area towards the bottom one in the midsection and one for your upper torso and all three of them work by connecting this little USB connector into a power bank which we'll take a look at now so let's get this thing working then. Now you can see that I've got a small power bank there. Now that is perfect for just an overnight session, but if you're gonna be fishing for longer periods of time, then obviously you need a much bigger power bank than that. Something like the, the Fox Halo would be absolutely ideal for much longer sessions of a week or two weeks at a time. I'll take a look at the Fox Halo in my next item because that is something that I've just recently got and what a power bank it is. But for this little demonstration, I'm just gonna connect the USB into that power bank. And obviously you've got this little pocket here that you can see. That's just where the power bank slots into and what you're going to see now is a little chart that's going to pop up on your screen and basically that chart describes how much time and usage you've got on all of the four settings because what you've got is four different settings which are adjusted by this little button here first one is comfort the second one is cozy and the third one is warm and the fourth one is hot 
I can hear you all asking me now, how long will the battery last on which setting? But uh, I can't answer that for you. Your results are always going to be based on the age and quality of the power bank that you're using, obviously the outside temperature and also your own body heat as well. You need to test the power bank that you've got to see if it's up to the performance that you require and it's all determined by whatever setting you have it on and obviously how long you're going to be on the bank for. But what I can tell you is a small power bank is not going to last you very long if you're going away for a couple of weeks at a time and you want this thing to work for you every day. You're going to need a much more substantial size power bank but you have to believe me on this, this is a really great great piece of kit and if you do suffer from getting cold when the temperatures go sub-zero then this is going to be of great use to you. Obviously I can't say this to the younger guys out there because the younger you are you definitely don't seem to feel the cold as much as you do when you get older. I certainly don't. So something like this is perfect for keeping me enthusiasm in my fishing. It keeps me going during longer sessions. It keeps me out in conditions that's like we've got today and believe me it really does work whether it's to take just the chill out of the bag or to chill off the mattress. You're going to find this item definitely of use to you. Anyway, let's take a look at the next item that I want to talk about today, which happens to be the Fox Halo power bank, which I've just got in the last couple of weeks. It's taking me a little bit longer than I thought to do that bed chair piece, and the sun's gone down now, and it's getting proper cold again. So this next item, I'm going to go and take a look at in the kitchen. Now, normally the missus doesn't like me doing anything to do with fishing gear in the kitchen or in the house, and uh, she's at work though, so... I can get away with it, but I've uh, got to be careful what she watches. Sometimes she looks at these vlogs. I remember last year I had typography come round here and I told her I'd done all the filming in the, we've got like a gym which we're going past now at the back of the garage and uh, I told her I'd done all the filming in there and then she saw it online and <laughs> we were in the kitchen. So she doesn't trust me all the time, but uh, hey ho, let's hope she doesn't watch it. Right, let's go in the kitchen and take a look at this next item. So on to the next item which is power banks and for quite a while I've been getting away with using just a couple of really small power banks when I'm fishing and they're okay, they've lasted me a while but they're only good enough for a couple of day sessions because they're only suited to charge my mobile phone a few times or my GoPro but in more recent times I'm finding myself doing a lot more work while I'm on the bank, using my laptop a lot more, also watching a few more movies and stuff like that and this is where I've needed a bigger power bank. This is the Fox Halo power bank, which was recommended to me by one of my mates, and he's had it for quite a while. Now I've had mine now for about a month, and I've used it extensively, and I must say it is a really great piece of kit. I'll talk about the positives in a moment, but on the negative side, as you can see, it's a little bit bulky, so it weighs around three kilos, something like that. So it's probably not suited to doing overnighters, but if you're gonna be going away for longer sessions, three or four nights, or even a week or two week sessions, then this might come in really handy for you. On the positive side, it's got lots of different options and fittings which are ideal for powering lots of different bits of equipment. So it's not just suitable for charging a mobile phone, you can charge lots of different devices with it. And this is the main reason why I really like it, because with me using my laptop a lot more, and I use a MacBook Pro, and that's got one of those USB-C fittings on it. And whilst I've been able to charge it while on the bank with other power sources, most of the time I've been using one of those inverters, which is not that good. You don't tend to get a great deal of charge out of one of those. But with this, it's actually got a USB-C fitting on the side of it, so I can plug my laptop directly into it and away we go. It's also got a USB dual fitting, plus a couple of cigarette lighter sockets, which are good for charging lots of different items. And just looking on the side of the box, it does give you an idea of how many charges you get from it with a mobile phone. I'm reading this off the side, and it says you can get approximately 22 to 26 charges with an iPhone A Plus or an X. And it even does 36 charges for a standard iPhone 8. I don't know about the more recent updated iPhones because it doesn't say, but I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere in the same region of those mentioned. For me, I use an iPhone 8 and I've yet to drain this thing down. And even during the two-week session I did recently, I still had quite a lot of power left in it. Another thing I like about this power bank is it gives you a pretty accurate reading on the side about how much charge is actually left in it. On the side here it's got four LEDs which indicate the battery life and how much is remaining. All four of them light up when you've got 100% charge and one light is about 25% battery power left. I did drain it down to 25% on my two week session recently but as I say there was still a bit of charge left in it. 
for the specky people out there I'll put some of the details on screen so you can check them out if you're interested another great thing about this charger is it's designed for use in cold weather again I'm reading this off the side of the box it utilizes a LiFo 4 battery cell which is more suited to outdoor use than the light polymers you tend to see with these kinds of battery packs and apparently this ensures a more consistent power source in cold temperatures I don't know what it means but what I can tell you is I've used it in sub-zero temperatures and it works perfectly well holding its charge really well too it's also got a couple of lights on it which may come in handy for some of you I tend to use my headlamp and the Ridge Monkey when I'm in the bivvy but if you found yourself in need of another light it's got an orange one and a white one on the side other than that there's not a great deal else I could say about a battery pack you'll just have to take it from me this is a really good piece of kit they have an RRP of £234 I think but as always if you search around on the net you can find them for much cheaper deals I've actually seen a few deals today where they're down to £145 or thereabouts which is a very respectable price for what you get because this power source is absolutely perfect for carp anglers so it definitely gets a thumbs up from me So we're 24 hours on from when I did that filming at home and as you can tell I'm now on the bank and I'm at Girton which is about 35 minutes or so away from my house and the reason I'm here and not on my normal lakes is because they're all frozen and Girton very very rarely freezes it's currently about minus two degrees but there's a nice gentle breeze blowing on the lake so it's a perfect place to come to and put the rods out talk a bit about rods and know that it's not going to freeze the reason I want to talk about rods is because what I've got there is not my normal set of rods. Normally I'll be using the amplifier rods, but today I want to talk about these Exodus Pros because I've recently got myself a new set of them. And you might remember a couple of years ago in one of my vlogs, I was using the Exodus rods. I was using them in the 10 foot size, but they've been discontinued. And now we've got a slightly upgraded version of that rod, but it's still very, very well priced, which is why I want to talk about it today because everybody tends to have a main set of rods or certainly a lot of my friends do I know they tend to have a, a main set of rods and then a backup set of rods and these rods are so well priced that I think it's perfect for me to talk about them today because the cost of living crisis that's going on at the moment everybody's struggling for money and if you're thinking about getting yourself another set of rods to back up your main set then obviously cost is going to be a major consideration for you you might end up having to buy something that's second hand you might have to buy something that you probably don't want you're not sure about what to buy you're not sure whether the low price rods are any good etc and this is why I wanted to talk about this because these are a really good rod for what you're paying for so let's go a little bit more in depth on them and have a look at what they're all about Where these rods differ from the original Exodus range is in the build and without going too deep into the nitty gritty the best way of explaining things is that both sets of the same reactive carbon fibre but the updated version gives it a slower build up of power while casting which will obviously increase your chances of hitting better distances and whilst this is likely to be of minimal benefit when you're playing fish apparently it will give you more control under the tip especially when you're playing a hard fighting or a really powerful fish but the real benefit is on the casting side of things because the Pro is a much stronger rod so if you wanted to hit good distances then this is the version to get now the rod itself carries six eyes which includes the tip and as you can see it has a very understated graphics. So I think it's a lovely looking rod, it's not too flashy, it's got the, the nice Avid logo there and the book cap at the end and it's also got the nice Japanese shrink wrapped handle which is standard on most rods nowadays. They come in seven different sizes, there's two 10 foot versions in the three and the three and a half, I think that's right, and in the 12 foot version there's a, a three pound, a three and a half as well as a three and a quarter so if you want something in between three and a three and a half the 12 foot version is the one to get and you can also get a spot on the marker rod as well both in the 10 and the 12 foot and today I'm using the heaviest rods that's in the range that's the 12 foot and the three and a half pound version and I've not yet loaded them up and really pushed them through the paces because a lot of the lakes that I'm fishing have leader bands and they also have limits on what size of ledge you can use what I can say though is I can easily punch them over 100 yards with minimal effort and you can see that here today as I've demonstrated in the videos now I'm not going to give you a load of meaningless sales waffle, instead I'm just going to finish by saying that the most important reason for me mentioning these rods here today is down to the price because the RRP on these rods is around the £50 mark but if you shop around on the net you'll find all sorts of deals on them, mostly around the £30 to £35 mark and this is where I've got to say for a low end budget rod 
They offer absolutely brilliant value for money. So if you're wanting a well-priced rod that's capable of catching carp from all sorts of venues and situations, then take it from me, this rod will be a great addition to your kit. Before we move on, it's worth mentioning these single rod sleeves. I've just got to complement the rods. These are the compound rod sleeves. You can get either a double or single sleeve, depending on your situation, and they come in a 10 foot or a 12 foot size, featuring full protection for your rods, so you're not left trying to squeeze your rod into a tiny space. There's plenty of room in these to give full protection to big pit reels, line and the rod, and they feature 10 mil zips, EVA handles, and adjustable shoulder strap, as well as the unique compound webbing to which you can attach pouches from the AVI compound range. The single sleeve shown here RRP at $34.99 but you can get them for as little as $18.99 on the net if you shop around. That means you can get three Exodus Pro rods and sleeves for just over 160 quid, which I'm sure you'll agree is an absolutely fantastic price. Anyway, let's move on to the next item. You can probably tell I'm back at home now and in case you're wondering, no I didn't catch when I was at Girton. It was bitterly cold but I'm not making excuses, it was nice to be out. Now I'm filming this towards the back end of January so the weather is pretty much all over the place and we've still got lots of cold weather to come in the next few months because as we all know February is very much a winter month, March can be very much hit and miss and in recent years we've seen that April can be very cold as well so it's the perfect time for me to take a look at some clothing items which I've recently got hold of. Now I did take a look at the jacket that I'm wearing now in one of my vlogs, I think it was when I was over in Germany towards the back end of November last year and I caught that nice £50 common. This is the Ripstop camo thermal jacket from Avid but there's plenty of other items that I want to take a look at now and show you a little bit about them. The first item is the Arctic 50 suit, which I've had since early December last year. I've actually had one of these suits a few years now, from when I first started work for Avid, when it was just a standard green colour. But since then, Avid have recently updated the design, and we've now got this new camo pattern. So you could say over the years I've had a good chance to really give this suit a good field testing in some really cold conditions. And the very fact that I'm still using it today tells you what I think of it, because it really is a good piece of kit when you're after a bit of warmth and some all-round protection. Now the suit itself it comes in two different pieces there's an insulated jacket and a pair of salopettes I use mine for mostly sitting in the bivvy and just keeping warm but it's also suited to the worst of weather conditions both items have a fleece lining to keep you cozy and the jacket comes with an oversized hood which can be rolled into the collar it's also got zip pockets including an internal one as well as a drop hem at the rear to keep out any unwanted drafts as for the salopettes these have padded knees hand warmer pockets and adjustable ankles which definitely comes in handy when you're wearing boots but it's not just about the protection and the comfort with this suit. Perhaps the best thing about it is that Avid have really got the sizing right with it because you won't struggle to find a size that fits you. Not only does it come in the standard small, medium and large sizes, but you'll also find an XL, an XXL, an XXXL, as well as an XXXXL. And this is largely thanks to Avid having some really big guys in the team. I'm only a large size and I'm 6 foot and 13 stone. But if any of you have seen Sam James, who also works for the brand, you'll know why we needed the bigger sizes because Sam is an absolute giant of a bloke and he knows how to catch carp so he's out in all kinds of weather so the very fact that he uses one of these suits tells you how big they go to and I'm fairly confident that there'll be something for all of you if you take a look at the Arctic 50 suit it's been properly field tested and it'll keep you comfortable whatever the elements throw at you If you don't want a thermal garment, however, this is where the ripstop camo jacket and trousers comes in handy. These items are made from the same 20,000mm breathable material that's on the Arctic 50, but they don't have the thermal lining. Instead, they've got a lightweight soft touch material, making them suited for all seasons, whether it's a summer shower or biting cold winter wind you're out in. Now, both items are super compact, so can be stored in your bags easily, making them not just suited to fishing, but also for other outdoor pursuits. I recently took mine up to the Lake District where I did some walking in the fells in them, and they were absolutely great. They have the usual bits on them like zipped hand and chest pockets, subtle avid styling as well as adjustable comfort fittings and they come in the same range of sizes as the Arctic 50, making them suited to all shapes and sizes of carp angler. That's basically all of the main items that I've added to my kit recently. There are a few other bits and pieces that I've stocked up on for the year ahead such as a load of LEDs. Fishing as much as I do, I get through a lot of these, so I've added various sizes, although I mostly stick to the distance type lead, as these are better suited for all-round fishing that I do. I've also stocked up on lead clips and tail rubbers, hooks in all different sizes. My favourite being the snag hooks, which I use for all my fishing nowadays, whether it's overseas or UK venues. I've also given my reels a good clean and changed the line over so I know they're ready for when the weed starts to grow and the carp begin to wake up. The freezer's fully stocked with bait. This year I'll mostly be using the bug from DNA Baits. It 
it did me really well last year on a variety of different wars so no need to change it all I've done is got rid of last year's hook baits that gather in the rucksack and freshened up my stock with new liquids now's the time of year to get your gear all prepped and ready there's some fantastic deals available at the tackle shops in the winter and I'll finish off with a competition so if you'd like to be with a chance of winning an Avi Carp XL Storm Shield Pro Carry All all you have to do is subscribe to this channel like this video and comment below I'll select a winner before the end of February 2023 and I hope you all have a fantastic season and catch plenty of carp